In one year, I was able to scale my income to triple the amount that I was making from January now being in December, I more than tripled my following count across all of my socials. I paid my car off. I have gone to more events, worked with brands that I never thought I could and made so many things on my vision board from last year become a reality. And now I'm gonna teach you how to do the exact same thing. Welcome to the last day of Vlogmas and my last video of the year. When I was thinking about what I wanted this video to be, I knew that it needed to be my story from this year. And I wanted to take my story and pull all of the gems from it and give y'all some actionable steps so that you can have a year like I did. So let's talk about my journey and where I came from versus where I am now. Now, I don't wanna make it seem like I had this horrible life and I was down bad living on the streets and didn't have a dollar to my name. That actually wasn't it at all. But at the end of last year, I was watching a lot of different videos on how to improve your life. Girl, very similar to this one. After watching all of those videos and starting to take some of their advice and also do some of the things that I'm gonna advise you guys to do on at the end of this video, I started to get this gut feeling that I was on the precipice of big change. My gut was telling me that I wasn't living in my purpose. At the top of this year, I was not a full-time content creator. Actually, I've only been a full-time content creator since May, so less than a year at this point. Who at the top of this year, I considered myself a full-time artist because I was working for a media company and I was also talent for my show at the time called Swipe Talk. So social media and just media in general was my entire life but my socials were being put on the back burner. And a lot of my career goals and career aspirations were being put on the back burner because I had so much time and energy that I was putting into someone else's business. And that's the reality of so many of our lives where we have passions that we wanna achieve, we have goals, but because we are working just to pay our bills, which is what we need to do, we never get to realize that full potential because doing that requires your full-time attention. So at the top of this year, I was starting to gain a lot of traction. On February 1st, I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I posted my very first YouTube video in 2017. So to hit 100,000 subscribers was monumental to me after all of the work that I had been putting in. In April, I actually had 100,000 followers over on TikTok. So this was a weird period in my life. The period in which I was still working for the media company and I was doing my own thing was weird because I was growing personally and then professionally, I just wasn't on my A game. And looking back on that, I understand that now. I was making a lot more mistakes than I usually would. I wasn't as prompt. And if I'm being honest, I, my heart wasn't in it. I think that after my show got canceled, Swipe Talk, I just really felt like the writing was on the wall. Swipe Talk was 60 to 70% of my income every month. And then the rest was subsidized by another role that I held within my media company. Swipe Talk went away. And when Swipe Talk went away, so did that income. But even when that happened, I was trying to find other gigs to cover that money but something was telling me to sit still. And it was that exact same voice that had been in my head, that exact same feeling in my gut that had been there last year at the end of 2021. It was that same feeling. I am simultaneously growing and getting more opportunities for my own personal business. By the time April came to a close, I will be receiving a call from my boss that I was completely let go from the company altogether. And not only was that devastating from a monetary standpoint, taking my income down to zero dollars, but it also means that my editing was taken away because something that was definitely a blessing with working with that media company is that they took a portion of my earnings from YouTube monthly and they would edit a YouTube video for me weekly. And in that call, I lost all of that in one file swoop. And I know y'all are thinking like, Simone, like you had 100k on two different platforms like how are you making zero dollars outside of the media company listen baby a lot of my following is from short form viewerships you're not getting paid the same bag that you're gonna get from someone sitting and watching a 20 minute youtube video as someone watching a 30 second instagram reel or youtube short or TikTok and so on and so forth so the money that i was making was absolutely not livable and when I got that call, I broke down crying because of course I did. Really proud of myself for not crying on the phone with my boss, Slay. 
after I called the people crying, I had a real moment of silence to myself. I was like, Simone, this isn't for you. God is trying to tell you something. This is the first major point that I wanna make in my journey and the first place that I wanna stop to give y'all a lesson. Whenever you have something major change in your life, and I mean major, God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to shake the table so hard that you have no choice but to take a pause and ask, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what am I doing here? What needs to change? It would be the equivalent of, <laughs> this is much more violent but if you get punched in the face a lot of us are so reactive that we want to feel better about the punch in the face we want to hit the person back we want to run away from the situation and hide we want to cover up the bruise we want to do anything that we can besides sit in the fact that we just got punched in the face because it's crazy that we just got punched in the face it's going against that instinct that is going to give you the information that you need. Sitting in uncomfortability, sitting in a situation that you never thought that you would be in is exactly where the breakthroughs are made. You need to be able to sit in these lessons and sit in what you might think is the worst thing to happen to you instead of running away to try to figure out how not to feel it. Because when I lost my job, when I was sitting here with all these bills, in my name, I could have taken that time to blame God, to blame the powers that be, to blame my boss, to blame the economy, to blame anybody. What is your point in putting blame on things or trying to figure out whose fault it is? Because once you figure out the person to point the finger to, did that solve the situation that you were in? Did it make anything categorically better? because I'm almost sure that it didn't. So we're gonna immediately eliminate the time that you're gonna spend playing the blame game. And we're gonna figure out what is trying to be communicated to you. Like I said before, that's the difference between the mouse and the man. So when I lost my job, I did take that time to figure out. I listened to that gut instinct that told me that God was trying to tell me to be still. And it was a lot easier for me because if I'm being honest, that was the same instinct that I had at the end of 2021, that something big was going to happen. And I always used to tell God, like if I was given the time that I needed to be a full time creator, I would go crazy. And I felt like God said, okay, you keep on saying this, you're a little crazy. Here's the space, here's the opportunity, go crazy. Within that month of taking that risk on myself, I made more money in the month after I lost my job than I had made ever before in my entire life. And I'm not saying that money necessarily equates to happiness. Money is a marker for me because it is something that is tangible to me. It is something that I have been working towards. It is a personal goal for me. It might not be a personal goal for you, but it was just so prolific to me and such a point of testimony that I trusted God, I trusted my instincts, and it did not steer me wrong. That lesson also gave me a sort of strength. A lot of people don't think that they have intuition or can't really trust their intuition because you're not working it. Intuition is a muscle. Learning and understanding these gut reactions and moving on them, that's a muscle that you build over time. So you have to take the leap and really trust that you have no control in order to get the things that you would like. Now let me talk about the tangibles outside of money. I took the time to list out all of the things that have happened this year. Because like I said, it's not just a money thing. As soon as I parted ways with a journey that was no longer serving me, this is what happened. I started getting invited to events more than I ever have in my entire life. The first time I had ever been invited to an event at all was the summer of 2021. Fast forward to this past year, starting in May, I have gone to multiple TikTok events multiple YouTube events. I have gone to a Danessa Myricks event where I got ready with Danessa Myricks and then afterwards had the chance to meet with her, take pictures with her and talk to her. I went to a House of CB event. Not only was I invited to the event, but they also offered to dress me. So I was being invited to a brand event by a brand whose clothing I had on a wish list of things that I would buy if I had the money and they were offering to dress me for said event. Cool. I was invited to a true religion event 
And I can't even start to talk about the nostalgia and the fact that true religion was what all the it girls were wearing when I was growing up, but I couldn't even look in true religion's direction without feeling guilty about the fact that I could never afford to wear their clothes. And here I am being invited to one of their events and gifted clothing for attending said event just off my name. I was taken to see Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce for the Renaissance tour in a private suite by Rev Air. And then I was invited to the Black Girl Digital Awards where I got to be in a room full of women that I have loved and admired for years. In my wildest dreams, I didn't even think that I would be able to meet these people, but my name is being mentioned in the exact same sentence as these other women's names to the point where I'm in the same room as them, at the same event as them, be honoring other beautiful black women with them. Now on the professional side, I have had multiple modeling opportunities this year. I had a goal of making more friends in the industry. I have beyond crushed that goal and that ability. I had my first in-person meetup. The brands that I have been able to work with this year, Juvia's Place, with Rev Air, with Nordstrom Rack, with Dove. Mind you, the year before that, I think that I had a handful of sponsorships spread across the entire year. I had never had a partnership where I was paid more than in the hundreds of dollars. No matter the platform, no matter my numbers, this year, everything was different. I was just never really making the money that I knew I deserved. And that's when I started to set my eyes on wanting to have management. One of the management companies that I happened upon and figured out that I would love to be represented by is an agency called Kensington Gray. And they are an all black agency who explicitly focuses on the best of the best black talent in the influencer industry. Their words, not mine. And on my vision board, I have myself surrounded by a team of black women because it is very important to me that my team looks like me. Fast forward to September of this year, and I am signed by Kensington Gray. Out of all of the agencies that I could possibly be working with or signed for, I am signed with the agency that I wanted by name. I just am over, over, overwhelmed by the way that it feels like once I opened my heart and once I became serious, how door after door after door has opened for me. Now I wanna talk about how you can do everything that I just laid out for yourself. Even if you are not a creator, I don't care what your goals are. All of these steps will be applicable to you so that you can get to the life that you have wanted so badly and start that journey this year. My first question to you is what do you want? You need to define what you are looking for in this next year before we can start any of the rest of these steps. And I feel like for some of y'all, it'll sound like I'm being redundant. Like, of course I know what I want, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Well, one, I get comments all the time talking about how they have absolutely no idea what they wanna do with their life. I also get comments and not just get those comments, but see people in my very own life do the same thing. You start down a path that was never written for you. You're living a life that your parents want, that you're doing to impress others, or that your childhood self wanted, but you never took the time to actually explore what you now, you as an adult, or the person that you're maturing into actually wants. Because if you keep on trying to build a house on a shoddy foundation, it's gonna crumble every single time. And that might be why you experience failure so often. You're never gonna be able to actually achieve something that is not for you. And I have more videos on how you can really explore who you are and what you want for your life. But just a Cliff Notes version, you gotta get down to your bare bones to figure out who you are and what you want to do. Oftentimes we let what the world has made us into cloud who we actually are at our essence. One of the things that really broke me down was a sermon that I saw at the top of the year. It was by Pastor Stephen Furtick of Elevation Church and he had a sermon called Do the New You. That sermon broke me down. I was sobbing watching 
that sermon. I'll link it down below because it was that transformational for me. The point that he was making was that God, the creator, whoever you believe in, whatever you called him by, made you in his perfect image. And the only reason why you have all of these doubts and self-deprecation and self-hate is because the world taught you to hate yourself. That's why you have a negative self-image because you are holding yourself to a standard that is impossible to reach. When the only standard that you should be holding yourself to is the one that is the truest to you. And that broke me open. It reignited something inside of me. I don't know what it'll do for you, but it gave me the permission to be myself, to pursue my life and my ambitions and double down on who I was and my dreams and my aspirations. Now that's a foundation that you can build a healthy house on. If you're not a religious person, another program that I highly recommend is the Pathway Work through To Be Magnetic. I will also link their podcast slash website down below where basically they meld psychology and manifestation work into one. The work that they do is incredible. It is a monthly membership. It is $30 a month, which is quite the investment because it is also not cancelable like a Netflix subscription. So once you turn it on, it's on for 12 months and that's it. But it truly, 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 I believe had such a big hand in changing my life because I did that program at the top of the year and we see where I am now. Now, the next part of this, after you figure out what you want and what you want to be and start to build that healthy foundation, I want you to surrender. I want you to surrender and to understand that you are not in control. You have to give up control one, because aren't you tired, sister? Aren't you tired of trying to, most of my demographic is black, but for lack of a better term, white knuckle your way through everything. Like I would be tired if I was trying to control as much as most people are. You have to give up control if not just to build that muscle that I was talking to y'all about earlier, but also just for rest and for peace. I understand why people get so scared and feel like they can't make a mistake when you feel like you're in complete control and any wrong move that you make could cause your entire life to come to a crumble. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, sister, I feel comfort in the fact that I always have a guiding force and someone that is there for me and someone that knows better for me. There's so much freedom in relinquishing and letting go. And that's gonna be hard for some of y'all out there. To my control freaks out there, ooh, I feel like that was kind of triggering for me to say out loud, but that is a very, very important part of this journey. And the last thing that I need y'all to do, you need to walk in the life that you are trying to cultivate. And you're gonna do this in a handful of ways. One of the major things that I did is that I started doing a thing called scripting. And that is where you write things to yourself, you write letters to yourself as if you already have the thing. Let's say that your ultimate goal right now is to be a mother and have a family and to be a homemaker. You are going to get, I have this notebook specifically for my future self, but writing in it as if I am already her. This is my specific notebook for that. If you are the person that wants to be the homemaker, you're gonna write in your journal as if you are already her. So you're gonna be like, I'm so happy that I gave birth to my child happy and healthy with my husband by my side. My water birth went perfectly. Now my mom is here helping to take care of the baby. I feel so incredibly blessed to be in this 3000 square foot house with my husband that I've been with for two years, driving the insert car of your dreams. I am so happy for this life that I have. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Do we get what I'm getting at? So I am just looking at a couple of these. I just wanna read these on camera. I may or may not read it out loud, but I do have a few entries in here and I'm interested to see what I wrote at the top of the year. Wow. Not me about to start crying. Y'all, hold on. It says, dear God, thank you so much for my beautiful and wonderfully fulfilling life. It feels so good to be living in abundance, abundance in life, abundance in health, abundance in money, abundance in lifestyle and all of it. I am so happy that I have finally overcome my limiting beliefs 
when I look around at my beautiful home, I feel so grateful. The fact that so many brands that I have used for years have been consistently asking to work with me is so humbling and healing. I love the way it feels when young women tell me how positively impactful I have been in their life. That is all I have ever wanted. Thank you God for yet another beautiful day in my life. That's my life. I know that I'm giving y'all this advice, but I am still floored at the accuracy of what I just read. Wow. Um, sorry, that just threw me off completely. I didn't, I, I genuinely never, I didn't read that before I got on camera. Now I'm like, wait, what? So scripting, it really, really works. And it helps to exercise that imagination muscle because some of us, like I said, we have such limiting beliefs that we can't even imagine past a certain thing. You need to exercise that muscle to open your mouth and ask for things. Even if you can't open your mouth, write it down. What's impossible to you is an everyday request to God and to the universe, or again, whoever you believe in. You also need to start doing things that your higher self would. So I am thinking about the woman that I'm going to be in the coming years and what her life routine looks like. That woman eats healthy, she works out, she is up early, she is productive, she has a team behind her. So therefore I'm starting to build those things into my routine now so that when I am her, it's second nature. I don't have to think about it. You never want to be in a position where you're asking for a life that you have no tools to maintain. You cannot ask for a million dollars without having systems in place to manage said million dollars. You can't ask for a husband and for kids without working on the emotional maturity and the structure that it takes to be a wonderful mother and wife. Do you see what I'm getting at here? One of the things that's going to be actionable, especially at this time of year and is right for the picking, is making a very intentional vision board. You don't want to just look at random aesthetic images and throw them on your vision board. No, no, no. You want to really sit down and do everything that I was just telling you to do, going through your imagination, figuring out what you want your life to look like realistically from who you are, not through what other people are telling you to be. And then you want to figure out what's actionable in the next year. And then you want to put images on your vision board and sayings and numbers and all of that. We're doing purposeful vision boards this year. Let's go look at my vision board and then come right back. So this is my vision board. I have her broken up by like section. I'm not gonna go too, too in depth because like I said, this is such a specific thing to me. Also back here, that is a letter that I wrote to myself that I'm really excited to read because it was a letter basically like expressing everything that I wanted to happen this year, just writing to my 2023 self. And I'm really excited to read that at the turn of the new year. Also, I wrote a check to myself. It's not like a real check, like it's not cashable, but I printed it off and it came true. <laughs> I actually made more money than was on that check, which is insane. I have pictures of being on set. Brandon Peels is one of my top directors that I want to work with. I have myself surrounded by black women and working with black women, which is something that I absolutely achieved this year. And just like working, because y'all know I love to work. I have pictures of friendships because I really, really, really wanted to be intentional about cultivating friendships. One of the things that I cried on camera at, I had to edit it out of the video. I was doing my hair and I read this. One year from now, I want to be able to look back and say, damn, I really did believe in myself and it worked. And that truly is such a representation of what this year has been for me. I hope that this video was helpful for you all. This year was the most trans formative year of my life and I want you all to have the exact same thing. I want you all to live up to your potential and to have a life that is beyond your wildest dreams. Like I want you to be looking at God like this is more than what I asked for. You deserve that and I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you and I'm so proud of you in advance. Thank you guys so much for coming to another video. I cannot believe that we did Vlogmas the way that we did it. 15 days. I've never been able to do that before, but I did it. I'm here with you guys and I love you guys. Thank you so much for a beautiful, wonderful year. I love y'all beyond measure. Y'all have changed my life. I will see you guys 
super duper soon in my next video in 2024.